What is going on everybody? Welcome back to RC Car Garage and we got something new from WPL. So as you guys all saw on the thumbnail, we're gonna go open this up and see how this thing looks. All right, you guys. And here it is, the box. This is a fully licensed, I believe this is the first fully licensed uh, rig that they have come out with. Suzuki Jimny. I've always liked these Suzuki Jimnys, and when I saw that WPL was coming out with one, I had to pick this up. I mean, the box art just looks absolutely awesome on this thing. This is what they say is a one-tenth scale, but it seems kind of small for it to be a one-tenth scale. So to me, I think this is probably like, I don't know, one twelve. 116 scale but um, we're gonna open it up and we are going to see but they did one heck of a job with a box art on this this just looks absolutely awesome on here uh, you flip this thing upside down and you have all the specifications that are all underneath here the uh, tells you how to use the controller battery hookup and everything, charging instructions. All right, so once you guys, let's pull this back here. All right, so once you got that pulled out, you also have instruction manual. And you have a little baggie here that has your, you get a little baggie in here that it has your charger. It does bring a little screwdriver. It has your wipers in here. Uh, it also has the mirrors that you're gonna wanna put on here. It has the mirrors here, it has an actual mirror right there that you're actually going to stick on to the mirror when you go to put it on and inside you also get some decals you see it's got the uh, gauge cluster there 4x4 four four stickers you get a couple stickers on here a couple screws and a couple uh, you got the handles and everything that you can put on this thing so this thing actually looks really very very good i like it i like it a lot this thing looks absolutely awesome let me uh let me go ahead get this thing out of the packaging and we'll look at it a little bit more all right, you guys, and here it is completely out of the box, and I have got to say that this thing looks absolutely awesome. So the controller that this comes with, you do have your steering weight, your steering rate, your throttle. Uh, apparently this is also on the, this is the same controller that they use for the D-Series. Uh, D12, I believe, is the same controller that they use for that. From what a lot of people are saying, that this is the same controller that uh, is on the D12, comes with the D12. I'm not, uh, not sure. Uh, I don't have a D12. The only WPL that I do have is the C24 that is right over there. So the doors do not open on this. The side doors, the rear door, um, the hood none of that opens uh, the battery is located on the bottom right in here that is where your battery is going to get installed it does come with a 600 milliamp hour battery this is uh, not a lipo battery definitely not a lipo battery but this is the battery that it comes with 
and it does look to be more on the smaller side. I will have to tell you, this thing is definitely a bit on the smaller side. I do like the fact that it is on leaf springs. Um, if I'm not mistaken, I believe that this model Jimny actually did come with leaf springs and not with uh, coilover suspension. So let's go ahead and pull this off. So the wheels, I, if I'm not mistaken, it looks like these wheels are 1.0s. They are, they look to be like they're 1.0s. They are, they got some, some softness to it uh, compared to the ones that come to with the C24. Now these do have foams in them. They are yeah, they do have foams in them. These are not beadlock wheels. The steering seems to be pretty good on here. Um, let's put in some batteries in the controller, put the battery in here, and let's turn this thing on and see if this thing has any lights. All right, you guys, and there it is. We do have some headlights on here. Now, do we have turn signals? No. Doesn't seem too bad. Doesn't seem too bad. So, if you guys look at the wheels as they're turning, I don't know. Not a big fan of that. Not a big fan of that. Seems like there's something in the transmission. Seems like there's something in the transmission that's causing it to, uh, to start cogging in there. I have no idea. So as you guys can see, it does have full interior. You got your steering wheel, you got your shifter right there, you have your handbrake, and right in there you have your four-wheel drive lever. You do have rear bench in the back also, so you could probably take the whole body off of here and just end up putting some figures in there bring you guys in a little bit closer on what's going on down here so this is a full metal chassis as you guys can see here that does have uh, leaf springs in the back leaf springs in the back there are leaf springs up front also um, of course this does have the plastic axles, the, the play and the steering, typical WPL stuff right there, the drive shafts, plastic drive shafts, so these right here are 155s. What do you guys think about that? How do you guys think these 155s would look? I think they will look pretty dang nice on here actually. That is what this little guy looks like and I'm saying little guy because it is a little guy. Um, there are no lights in the fogs right here but you are able to add them. So you might be able to take them off also but you are able to add lights on here. Um, the emblems and everything they are all in the bag right there so what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead going to put the handles on put the mirrors on put the wipers in the gas cap and I'm guessing there's another handle that goes there so I'm going to put all of this stuff on oh there's also these things that come with it and I believe these are probably license plate that would go right about there or something 
So what I'm gonna do, put all the handles and everything all together, and then we're gonna go take this guy outside and see how it does. All right, guys, uh, so we had, I had a little bit of a snafu here. So, I ended up losing the drive shaft. Yeah, more than likely my fault why I ended up losing the drive shaft, but I will explain later probably the reason why I lost the drive shaft. And uh, I actually just got lucky, so check this out. So if you guys can see, I now have a metal drive shaft in the back. Of course, the front is plastic. The one that I lost is, met, is uh, in the back. I have a metal one on there now. So, so now that I have a metal one on there, which was from the C24, uh, it was an extra one. The extra, there's an extra one that I had and I was able to put it onto this. So now let's give it another run and see how it's gonna do. So far it wasn't doing too bad on the rocks here, but let's put it back on the rocks and see how it performs.
All right, guys, so there it is. WPL C74 uh, Suzuki Jimny JA11. And I got to say, this thing really wasn't doing too bad. Uh, so one of the things that I was mentioning earlier about the drive shaft was with the stock drive shafts, and that's the reason why the metal one is on here, but with the stock drive shafts, it was binding up very, very badly. I thought that it was actually the gearing and the pumpkin here that were just way too tight and it was binding up. Like I even made my own shim here. As you can see, these are the shims that come with the WPL. And I ended up making my own shims thinking that the gearing in here was binding. So I put them on and it was still, everything was still too jumpy. It was not running smooth at all. And it, it was just way too jumpy for my liking. And so what I ended up finding out was that the drive line, the drive shafts were actually binding up. The stock drive shafts were binding up. So what I wound up doing was I got the drive shafts from the C24 and I put it in here. All that jumpiness, all that binding went away. So. I don't know, maybe the, I, I, I don't, I have no idea. All I know is that it was binding up. So I put the C24 drive shafts in and it worked flawlessly. Now, out in that run, of course, I ended up losing the rear drive shaft because I saw I only had front wheel drive, like, what the heck? So I lost the rear drive shaft. Luckily, I had a metal drive shaft. I actually have a front one, um, another metal drive shaft from the other axles that I bought for the C24. And I ended up putting this drive shaft on. All that jumpiness, all that binding went away. So if you do get one of these, I would highly recommend upgrading the drive shafts. Definitely get the metal drive shafts. The WPL C24, um, I know the C24 drive shafts fit on here. So I would recommend getting the WPL C24 drive shafts switched out the to the metal drive shafts. It will have be such a smooth ride. There will not be any more binding or jumping. Like it, it looked like every revolution of the drive shaft, the wheels were just skipping. And I ended up finding out that it, it was the drive shaft. So I ended up switching out the drive shafts. Now, I do have uh, right in here. Yeah, so right in here, as you guys can see, I do have another the light. So I do have another drive shaft right in here. If I can move those out of the way. So I have another drive shaft in here that I will end up putting on this. The only reason I haven't put it on yet is because I kind of lost the pin that, uh, <laughs> yeah. So I kind of lost the pin that holds everything together basically. So the pin, well, the pin that basically holds these two pieces together like that that goes whoa, 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 almost lost it there that goes right into that hole there's a pin that goes there that connects all this together I lost it so I have to find it over here somewhere or order a new try to contact WPL and see if they can send me out one of those pins so I can um, end up getting this drive shaft on here and have this thing running smooth. Again, I would highly recommend upgrading the drive shaft for this thing. So all in all, this thing was not running too bad until that happened. I guarantee you, it will run fine with the stock drive shafts, but you're gonna have that jumpiness The um, that's gonna be the binding, the jumpiness, the binding, that's going to be in there. 
I don't like combining and being jumpy like that, so I would highly recommend switching them out. Uh, other than the drive shaft, this thing wasn't doing too bad. The um, articulation, I mean, it's leaf spring suspension. I could probably take out one of the springs, one of the leaves that are on here. I could probably take out one of the leaves that are on here on each on each corner just to give it, you know, a little more articulation out of it. Now, the other thing that you might end up having an issue with, well, I see that there's an issue with, is when the leaf springs compress, you see where it's hitting right there. So you're not gonna get full articulation on the front end because it keeps hitting it keeps hitting right there with that screw where the bumper mounts to the bottom so every time I mean it's already that's this is where it's at and so this is where it sits at and then just push down a little bit that's where it stops so you're not getting full articulation on the front here because of where the buckle for the leaf spring is hitting that screw there. Now on the back is a completely different story. That's it maxes out. There's nothing on the back preventing it. There's nothing on the back preventing it from hitting anything. As you guys can see, it goes all the way. And the drive shaft. Now, I would highly recommend getting a different drive shaft. These drive shafts just came apart. I don't know why. <laughs> so, more than likely, that's what happened with the last one. So, the C24 drive shafts do fit, but you might need the ones a little bit longer. Uh, I totally just extended this all the way, and as you guys can see, it just came out of place. So, you are going to need drive shafts that are a little bit longer. Uh, again, the C24 drive shafts do fit on here, but you're going to need something a little bit longer. I have a feeling that WPL probably has or will come out with drive metal drive shafts for this thing. I did end up putting all the accessories on. I put the wipers on, I put the antenna on, I put the mirrors on. I will tell you what, for every video that you guys have seen on this thing that don't have these guys on, I understand why. Because these are such a pain in the butt to put on. It took me a while to put them on. But I do like the fact that it's not, it is plastic, but as you guys can see, as you guys can see, It didn't break <laughs> it just literally popped out so now you guys will be able to see how much of a pain it is to put on all right actually it didn't go too bad I guess because I already had it on but the main fact that it it's like it won't break as soon as it hits it let's say it rolls over as soon as this hits a rock it's not going to break off so that is a nice touch about it um it does look good i put the handles on there on the back and everything i did put the suzuki sticker on the uh wheel cover back here i put all the lights on not lights but the light stickers um i don't know if the jimny from this era had that 4x4 on there but to me, it looked like it would be a right spot to have it on there. So I put that sticker on there. I put this one on here. All uh, the lights in the rear on the side marker right there. And on the front, I put those stickers on. Uh, the only sticker I did not do is the one that goes on the inside for the uh, speedometer and the tachometer. That is the only one that I did not put on because I would have to take the whole body off of the chassis, get the interior out, and end up putting the sticker on. I will do that eventually. Maybe when I get a driver to put in here, I'll end up putting that in. Um, the electronics in this thing, 
seem to be a little better than what is on the C24. Again, I can only compare this to the C24 because that is what I have. And it seems to me like this has more power than the C24 and the electronics seem to be better. Uh, now, another thing that a lot of people might be wondering, which I ended up finding out, is how do you get the wheels off? Well, these little caps right there, they do not turn, spin. They don't spin off. The way I had to do it to get that little cap off was I just grabbed some pliers, just grab the pin like so with the pliers, just grab the pin, the cover or wheel cap, nut cap, and just pull. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying not to break it. So let's do it on this side. Because I already have one of these wheels off. So there you go. Just pull it and there is a screw that that this cap covers. So let's just put that back on so we don't lose that. I do have these 1.55 wheels on here that I think don't look too bad. I don't think the 155s look bad on here at all. Um, it is, I mean, it's going to give you a little more height. It'll give you a little more height out of it. But I don't think the 155s will look bad on here. So if you do go to upgrade wheels on here, um, to me, I think that these 1.0 wheels are a little too small for the body. I think that 155s are definitely... I think 155s are definitely the size to go with for this because if you actually happen to take a look at a picture from a JA11, the tires, the wheels actually look a lot bigger than these do. So that's just my two cents. If you guys go to upgrade the wheels, I would definitely go with a 5 to 12 millimeter hex adapter and just get 155 wheels and smack them on here at Sky. I think this guy is going to be a very, very good trail truck. Uh, is it worth, I think it's like $80 or something like that? I'll have the price on it. Is it worth it? Yeah definitely is um, definitely is worth it I would definitely recommend getting this thing thank you for watching hit that like button subscribe and I will see you guys in another video you all keep RCing